According to Joel Dahlstrom, righteousness is a status achieved through divine intervention and human obedience. Good day, friends. Welcome to another episode of Moments of Devotion, A Sweeter Journey with Jesus. And for today's episode, we will take a look on the fourth beatitude and what does this suggest to us and what are we going to discover on this fourth beatitude. But before we do that, let's have a short word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise and thank you for another moment of devotion you've given to us. We invite your holy presence to be in the midst of us, Father, as we are going to reflect upon your word. Give us the holy wisdom and knowledge that we may be able to grasp the things that you're about to convey to us. Thank you for the assurance of answering our prayers and the assurance of forgiving us from all of our trespasses. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Now the title of our devotional for today is The Gospel Unveiled. And our key text, of course, is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, but we are down to the verse of 6. And I'll be reading in the Revised Standard Version. It says here, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. So we are already on the fourth beatitude. So what's with this fourth beatitude? Let's find out. With the fourth beatitude, we have reached a major turning point. The first two exemplified a turning away from our human, human weakness and sin. While the third expressed the Christian's humility in light of that weakness. While the fourth, by way of contrast, is a turning toward the positive aspect of Christianity. It is a hungering and thirsting to be right with God and to be like Him. So the fourth beatitude is clearly suggesting that we as a Christians should, sh should um, be after righteousness, to be like Jesus. Instead of aftering possessions here on earth, instead of aftering fame here on earth that could never satisfy our soul, we should be aftering after the righteousness of Christ that will fill both our body and our soul. Thus, the Christian life is more than a mourning over past sins. It is also an intense desire for present and future righteousness. So being a Christian is um, simply free from a sinful dispositions and completely or complete restoration of our soul to the image of God. The fourth beatitude is one of the great promises of the Bible because those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. It does not promise may be filled, but shall be filled. That is the good news that stands at the focal point of the New Testament. So surely we have to, surely we will be filled if we seek or we are after the righteousness. So we have to rest on this promise that we will be filled and satisfied. So righteousness is a word with more than one meaning. In the fourth beatitude, it implies both the lofty height of being right with God in relationship and of being like Him in character. So the, the righteousness comes with two meanings. That is being right with God, meaning you have that good relationship, you have, that, you have already established a good relationship with God, and you have this character. Or you behold already the, Jesus, uh, the character of Jesus and in your life and that's true righteousness humans have failed dismally in both endeavors paul puts it succinctly when he notes that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god recognition of the fact that in our personal journey is what poverty of spirit and mourning are all about those whom the spirit leads with will have a deep sense of unworthiness that they are powerless to do anything about. It is in the light of that utter hopelessness that Paul rejoiced that we are justified or counted righteous by his grace 
as a gift. Now the question is, was Jesus also hungering or thirsting for righteousness? Well, absolutely yes. Because God's longing for the world to be set right is what drove him to come to incarnate, to live, to die, and rise again. So it seems to us that this hungering and thirsting, then being satisfied in this fallen world, grows in us as we grow towards maturity and Christ. More and more, we are mourning over every word, gesture, or relationship that is not all that it should be. We mourn over the pain we humans cause each other and the creation and find the longing to see the life, joy, blessing that comes with righteousness grow and more and more intense. But here, the positioning of the fourth beatitude between those dealing with people's relationship to God and those highlighting their responsibility to other individuals indicates that righteousness in the Beatitudes is more than mere justification by faith. It also implies being right with God in character, as indicated by the fact that those who receive His justifying grace, God then immediately sends out to serve the world by being merciful. And thus, being filled with righteousness relates to both justification and sanctification. The gospel of Christ not only saves us from the penalty of sin, but also from its ruling power in our daily life. And in place of being a gossiper and hateful, God wants to make us a peacemaker. In place of lust, He desires to infuse with us with purity of heart god wants us to be like him in character to be like jesus in character and as a result the word or the word righteousness in the fourth blessing spans both halves of the beatitude so here we find that the hungering and thirsting for righteousness in the world respects honors or seeks or respects honors or seeks neither but because Jesus says that we are free for, to hunger, to be hunger for righteousness, because someday we will be satisfied. Satisfied means being um, sated or full up. So we will lose this longing with its complete and total sat satisfaction. And someday we will live in that freedom, that total righteousness that will bring. So isn't that wonderful thing? Because God not only longs for this, but He will bring it about through Jesus Christ. So, friends, my prayer for you today is that may we stay in hunger and in thirst after that justifying righteousness of Christ. That may we always be filled up, we always be uh, sated up with the righteousness of Christ and be a happy soul's while we're living here on earth. So let's have a short word of prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise and thank you for this wonderful study that we have that um, through Jesus' righteousness, we should be filled up. But uh, Lord, we ask for that uh, we will stay hungering and thirsting for that righteousness of Jesus, that we, we may be always be dependent upon thee. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us. And thank you for the blessings that you ha we have received from thee. Thank you also for the assurance of salvation and the assurance of answering our prayers. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Thank you very much, dear friends, for being with me today. And if you have missed or if you want to review some of our previous episodes, just go to tv.hcbn.org or you can subscribe on our YouTube channel, that's HCBN TV, and like our Facebook page, He's Coming Broadcasting Network, for more updates and information about us. I'll see you again next time here in Moments of Devotion, our sweeter journey with Jesus. God bless you all.